Wow. The first, the first berry ever grown here. So this is not what we came out to do a video on today, but I was just out in the garden and uh, came across this absolutely stunning strawberry. If you've not yet put some strawberry plants in, now is the time to do it. You'll only reap bigger rewards later. I mean, this is just the very beginning. I have like four fruits on there and about three or four other plants that are fruiting, but nothing major yet. First year, you don't expect to get a whole lot of fruits first year. And um, I wasn't either, I was not expecting to get fruits. So that's why I was surprised when I, when I came out here and saw this nice, beautiful, absolutely stunning red strawberry. Wow. Wow. It is so sweet. Nothing beats, absolutely nothing beats strawberries. So what I really came out to do a video on today was with our tomatoes. So let's go over there. Uh, this was simply just because <laughs> I'm, I'm like a dog with squirrels. Oh my gosh, I get so easily sidetracked when I see things. So let's go ahead over to our, uh, over to our tomato bed now and we'll talk about how to increase the yields on your tomatoes. So when it comes to the flower of the tomato, you're really gifted with the ability to have loads of fruit because tomato flowers are structured a bit differently than, than most of your other flowers. Oftentimes with our, our other flowers in the garden like uh, zucchini or cucumbers, any of your melons or gourds, things like that, you have male and female flowers. And that means that you must have flowering at the same exact time, both male and female flowers, for them to be pollinated and for the, uh, the pollen to be transferred from the male to the female. Um, and then you have a, a successful fruit. However, with tomatoes and, and a few other things like peppers and stuff like that, um, but for this episode, we're talking about tomatoes. You can increase the production of your tomatoes because both male and female sex organs are within the same flower. And this does one thing uh, really well. It allows you to have fruit set on almost every single flower. And oftentimes as gardeners, we neglect this amazing blessing by simply just letting the, the tomato plants do whatever they wanna do. But what you'll find is that more often than not, uh, the, the, the flower fails to, to be pollinated properly. And then what happens is the flower drops off and everyone freaks out and says, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my tomatoes. Yeah, something's wrong with your tomatoes. They're not being pollinated properly because it takes either you or an insect to vibrate the flowers to knock the pollen from the inside of the male uh, down into the, the female portion of the flower. And so the, the flower points down like that because there's the male portion above and the female portion below. And what happens is when there's a vibration, like a, like a bee clinging to it, and those, the vibrations from the wings will create micro vibrations that will send the pollen traveling down to the female portion of the flower. And that's how you get successful fruit set. But oftentimes, uh, you know, it might be cold weather, it might be rainy weather, it, you might be in a greenhouse with no, with no pollinators, um, or you might just uh, get unlucky and they might just pass the flower by. That happens a lot um, because there's not a whole lot of pollen or interesting stuff on tomatoes that pollinators really like. So um, you get about, if you do nothing at all, I've found you get about 25% of the flowers to actually successfully fruit, if you do nothing at all. But you can get almost 100% success by doing this method. Come on in close. I'll show you just how easy it is. I know, absolutely know everyone's going to be able to do it because if you're on a computer, you have fingers, and if you have fingers, you can do this method. Let's go. So you can see here, this is one of our tomatoes that's beginning to flower here. And you'll notice that the flower opens up. Now, when the flower is closed like this, this method won't do you much good because the flower is not ready to be pollinated yet. But you can see here, this flower has been closed this flower has been closed, and that means we have successful fruit set. If the flower closes around the fruit, you have successful fruit set. When the flower is not pollinated successfully, it will actually break off right here at the where the knuckle is, and the whole thing will just fall right off. So what we wanna do is we want to take our finger and just flick the truss of flowers. And we're going to do this whenever new flowers open. We're going to do this. It doesn't harm these ones. It only pollinates the ones that are just open. 
and I do this for about 10 seconds. You can even come down here at the base and you can be aggressive with it. See how the flower, people are so worried about their flowers. Oh my gosh, don't do that. You're going to break them off. Absolutely baloney. You can do this quite hard and I'm just vigorously shaking the flower back and forth, knocking all of that pollen down. And these flowers here are successfully pollinated. They'll set fruit, almost guaranteed. Coming over here, here's another one. I'll just come over here and I'll just do this. And this takes, honestly, between 10 and 20 minutes with this many. I mean, I have a lot of tomato plants here. I have tomato plants here. I have tomato plants over there. So it takes a little while, but it's well worth it. I mean, it really is well worth it. I mean, you got nothing better to be doing, especially when there's, you know, zero weeds in your bed. So you don't have to spend time waiting and you can come through here and ensure that you get a good, good tomato harvest. Here's another one. This one I've done and I've gotten two successful flowers. I have some more open. So I'm just come through here. And I just do this little walking motion on the, on the stem. You can do it with one finger. You have to do a little little harder because one finger it is not as repetitive. Um, over here, you got some some real nice blooms starting to open. Look at that nice beautiful one there. Um, that's on. Uh, I'm not sure what tomato this is. I think this is a, a beef steak. And uh, oh, no, nope, Cherokee purple actually. So um, we're gonna come through here. Same thing. Just smack that that truss of flowers. And um, you can use things like a vibrating toothbrush. Uh, but those, I mean, those really work just about as well as this. Uh, the, the micro vibrations from the vibrating toothbrush are, you know, it's a little less motion. It's just uh, a little less effort on your part. It's a little easier for people that, that don't want to do this for 10, 20 minutes. But for me, I don't, I don't quite mind. Um, and I get the same results, to be honest. So was it really as easy as I said it would be? I'm usually telling the truth. It was quite easy, I know. So. I really recommend doing this. It is just, I mean, it's so worth the effort to get, to, I mean, to get 25% of tomatoes that flower or almost 100%. Really, it's a no brainer. It's so worth it. So worth the time and effort. So I do hope you enjoyed this tip. I really hope that you try it in the garden. And like I said, there are other things that do this. You can get a vibrating toothbrush and stick the, the toothbrush right on the, the back of the truss. Those vibrations will work too. It does not have to be abrupt. It just has to be repetitive and it has to shake the flower because you really need that pollen from the male portion to drop down into the female portion of the flower. So uh, it is so, so easy. I do hope you try it. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Bye.